We're happy to be with you today in the breaking of the bread and now in fellowship around the open word for a season. I realize that we have with us uh, a mixed company. And so by the help of the Lord, I trust we might be able to uh, address both simultaneously. I trust that in this exercise, somewhat of the greatness of Christ might come out to the young hearts as well as the old. So I want to look at uh, four scriptures. They're all bearing on the same thing. And trust that we will get the spiritual meaning and significance from it. Matthew 21. As they drew near to Jerusalem, they came to Bethpage at the Mount of Olives. Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into a village over against you, and immediately you will find an ass tied and a colt with it. Loose them, lead them to me. And if anyone say anything to you, you shall say, The Lord has need of them. Mark's Gospel, chapter 11. They drew near to Jerusalem, to Bethpage, and Bethany at the Mount of Olives. He sends two of his disciples and says to them, Go into the village which is over against you, and immediately on entering into it you will find a colt tied upon which no child of man has ever sat. Loose it, lead it here. And if anyone say to you, Why do you this? Say, The Lord has need of it. Luke 19, verse 29. Came to pass, as he drew near to Bethpage and Bethany, at the mountain called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying, Go into the village over against you, in which you will find on entering it a colt tied up, on which no child of man ever sat at any time. Loose it, lead it here. And if anyone asks you, why do you loose it? Thus shall you say to him, because the Lord has need of it. Lastly, John 12. Verse 14. Jesus, having found a young ass, sat upon it, as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion, behold, thy king cometh, sitting on an ass's coat. You'd notice that in every scripture it's the same incident. And the Lord Jesus records incidents sometimes two and three times. It's not because he didn't have uh, better things to do or he couldn't find other incidents to record. But the reason why things are done in duplicate, why they are done over and over, is because there is a significant message in each particular case. So we want to talk about the significant message in each case of the incidents we've read. The first one in Matthew. There is an ass. It's a donkey. And those of us, particularly from the Caribbean and from the the Middle East and in those areas, are very familiar with these animals. In this country, You only see them when you're out in the country parts, right? But in the major cities, you very seldom come in contact with these animals. But nevertheless, we're familiar with this ass, this ass, a donkey. 
The Lord Jesus has an interest in this ass and also in Matthew in the colt, the fold of an ass, the, the uh, result of, uh, of the donkey, what the donkey produces. He has an interest in these two. Why is he interested in Matthew's gospel in the ass and the colt? Because the gospel of Matthew has to do with the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. He wants people for his kingdom. He wants persons in his kingdom. And the ass would typify the mother or the older person and the colt, the younger person, such as you young little ones here today. So not only is the Lord interested in older people, He's also interested in young ones. You remember when there were those who brought children to the Lord Jesus for Him to bless them? What did the disciples say? Go away. Send them away. They're unimportant. The Lord Jesus says, they are unimportant. No, they are very, very important to me. He says, my kingdom is made up of little ones. So you little ones today, you are very, very important to the kingdom of the Lord Jesus. The kingdom of the Lord Jesus has in mind that there will be persons who come under subjection to Him. Who give their lives to him, who are prepared to come under his rights, who are prepared to be totally for him. And I don't know what your circumstances may be this afternoon in terms of whether or not there are those among us who have had a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, who have had the gospel of God's grace opened up to you. That God loves you and in loving you, He has given His well-beloved Son to demonstrate that love. And that beloved Son of God went to Calvary's cross and there He laid down His life so that He might secure you as that ass or as that colt for Himself. And on the basis of His death, he has provided a means whereby you little one, you all the ones, can come to know him. So he wants the ass for himself. If he wants it for his kingdom, the Lord Jesus has a kingdom that he's establishing. And each one of us that have come under his sway, we are subjects in his kingdom. We are under His authority. And He wants to bring us in Matthew's Gospel under His sway. And not only us, the older ones, but He wants to bring you little ones as well, as little coats. He has need of you. And that's the response that the disciples were to give when, he, when they untied the ass and the colt and they started leading it to Jesus, there were some who would most likely begin to ask, where are you going with the ass? Where are you going with that colt? They are to say that the King, the Lord, has need of you. I want to say that to you this afternoon, dear little ones, and older ones as well. The Lord has need of you. Well, what does he need me for? What can I do for him? What can I be for him? Well, you can be an instrument. You can be a light. There's a little song that says, Jesus wants me for a sunbeam to shine for him each day. To give light to the world. This world is in darkness. As having the influence of sin upon this world, it is in darkness. And Jesus says, I want you, little colt, so that I, you can come under subjection to me, 
and that you can be a little sunbeam in your little corner. At school, at home, he says, I want you, I need you. To you older ones, he says the same thing. If they ask you where you're going with the ass, tell them the Lord has need of you. Isn't it wonderful for you little ones and for us older ones to hear that expression this afternoon that the Lord has need of us? Think of that. That the Lord, the supreme being, the God of creation, the one who upholds all things by the word of his power, the one who has created everything, who spoke and it was done, who commanded and it stood fast, that great one is saying, he has need of me, he has need of you. Imagine, suppose you heard today that the president had need of you. Suppose you heard today that the Queen of England has sent a message to you saying that she has need of you. Come to England. She wants to see you. What would you do? I'm sure I'd be at the White House in a quick moment if I heard that the President has need of me. Well, we're talking about someone who's greater than the President. Someone who's greater than the Queen of England. Someone who's greater than any monarch. We're talking about the Lord Jesus, the Lord of glory, the God of creation, the one for whom all things were made and by whom all things were made, he says today, I have need of you. That puts a kick in our step, doesn't it? It thrills us. The Lord has need of you. That's why you're here today, because he has need of you. He wants you, little ones, to be a sunbeam, but us older ones, he also wants us in his kingdom as subjects so that we can be under his sway, under his authority. The next incident is in Mark. He needs us in Matthew for his kingdom. When we go to Mark's gospel... The Lord, it's the same incident, but it says again, the Lord has need of it. It's not now the ass and the colt. In Matthew, it's the ass and the colt, but strictly now in Mark, it is the colt. It's the little one. It's the little one. The Lord has need of us in Mark because the character of Mark's gospel is the servant character. He wants us for service. He wants you, little one, to serve him. How are you going to serve him? You're going to serve him in the capacity of telling others about his love. Jesus just doesn't want you and me to be quiet people. He just doesn't want us to sit in a little corner and remain there hidden from men. He wants us in the shining of our lights, that our lights are like that which is on a hill. Not a light that's covered up by something, a bushel, but he wants us to be a light like a light that is on a hill, on the top of a hill. Doesn't everybody see that light? On the top of a hill? Certainly. It's very, very visible to all. So in Mark's gospel, he wants us to serve him. And, he, and the service that we're going to do to him is going to be like the very service that he carried out for his God and Father. The Lord Jesus, while he was here, was the true, faithful servant of Jehovah, God. And he served his God Consistently, persistently, faithfully. He, the word, there's a word in Mark's gospel that helps us to understand how the Lord Jesus was the servant. There's a word, well, it's two different words, but they have the same meaning. Immediate and straightway. That's the kind of response of a servant. When, as a servant, you're working for someone and the master says to you, Please do so and so. What do you say? Well, I'm going to take my time. 
I'm going to do it when I want to do it. Uh, maybe I'll get to it. No. A servant immediately responds to the master. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. I'll get to that right away. That's the character of the servant in Mark's gospel. The Lord Jesus, as he got instructions from his true master, he, he immediately, straightway responded. So, to you and me, if we are going to be servants like this blessed servant was, as the colt, soon as the master says, bring it to me, the response will be, Master, I want to serve you. So in Mark's gospel, it is the servant in testimony to his master. Bring that colt for me. The Lord has need of you as a colt. So that you might be a testimony here at school, at home, at play. You might be testimony in your little family. You might be able to speak of Jesus Christ as the one who loves me. You know that little song, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. And that verse of scripture, John 3, 16, simple. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That's the kind of testimony as a little one you'll be as that coat. And for us. Older ones, believe us, the Lord has need of us that we might be here in true testimony to Him in service and servant character. Then when we move on to Luke's Gospel, the next incident in Luke 19, same character of things, the Lord has need of it. He says, I want the colt to be loosed. In every situation, there is an untying. A colt cannot serve in any way if it's been tied up to the fence. The ass itself could not be service in the kingdom if the ass is tied up to the fence. It has to be loosed. Therefore, as the ass today, as the colt today, you can't remain tied. You know what happens about tying? It's it, it sort of si is significant of how we are tied to this world. How we are tied to religious things. He's not looking for religious people. He's not looking for a religious ass or a religious cult. He's looking for persons who have been liberated and set free so that they can be for him. So if you say to me, well, you know, I have my service. I do this and I do that. And you know, I'm very generous. I give and I give and I give. So these things are good things. Yes, they're good things in themselves. But that's not what he's looking for. He's not looking for good people. That's not what the Lord Jesus is looking for. He's not looking for a good colt or a good ass. He's looking for persons who recognize that in themselves there is nothing good. Just what Paul says to the Romans. There is none righteous. No, not one. He's not looking for good people. If he were looking for good people, he will get all of the philanthropists of this age. He'll get all those who give away lots of money and he will go for them. But he says, that's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for persons who are prepared to give themselves to me. To get untied. No longer in bondage. He says, I want you to be loosed, little one. I want you to be cut loose from the fence that you're tied to. If it's your religion that you're tied to, I want you to get cut loose. 
If it's your education you're tied to, I want you to get cut loose. If it's your fun and entertainment that you're tied to, I want you to get cut loose. That's what he's looking for. Persons who can be untied. That's what he wants. And it is only the grace of God through faith in the Lord Jesus that unties us. Whether you are a little boy, a little girl, or an older person, or whether you are a saint in the Lord Jesus. You cannot, we cannot remain tied. We got to be cut loose from the fence so that we might be a colt, an ass available for him. So in Luke's gospel now, what we have is the truth of the Lord Jesus as that son of man. The son of man. And the Son of Man is looking that He might find us capable for His praise and His glory. The Gospel of Luke begins with a priest who is in the temple, Zacharias. He's to be a praising priest. It also speaks to us of a Simeon who is like a priestly man. And then the Gospel of Luke closes with a large company of priestly people. So what is the Lord Jesus looking for in Luke when he says, untie that coat? He wants you young person and older person. He wants us to be persons who have lips to praise him. He wants us to be colts who are able to praise his name. He wants us to be a praising People, are you a colt that's still tied? He wants to cut you loose this evening, this afternoon, so that you might be praising. You might have a song on your heart. You might have a song on your lips. You might be able to express worship to Him. That's why God is seeking people, you know. He's seeking persons so that we might be able to worship Him. That's why God sent His Son. That's why the angels at the time of His birth, the birth of the Lord Jesus, cried glory to God in the highest and on earth, God's good pleasure in man. It is the response that God is looking for, that there might be persons to praise Him. And that's why He wants to cut loose the colt, so that the colt this eve, this afternoon, might be a praising colt. There might be a response from you, little one. There might be a response from every one of us of worship and praise to Him. That's why He wants the colt in Luke untied, so that we might be praising. And lastly, the Gospel of John. Do you notice in the Gospel of John, there are no disciples being sent out to find anything? No disciples whatsoever. In the three Gospels, the synoptic Gospels we call them, everyone is inst- the disciples are instructed in everyone to go and find, first of all, the ass and the colt. In Mark and Luke, it's to go and find the colt and then to tell anyone who objects to the untying of the colt, that you're not going to object because there's a greater person who needs the colt. You see, man is going to object, you know, when God says, I'm going to put my claim on you. Man is always going to object because man doesn't want to come under the rights of God, you know. Man wants to come under his own rights. That's the nature of man. I am the captain of my ship. I'm the master of my life. You're not going to regulate me in any way. But God says, until you come under subjection to me and to Christ, then you as master of your own life, you're going to destroy your life. You're going to run your ship against the rocks. 
You're going to destroy your life. If you think you're a master of your life, you're going to demonstrate that in truth and fact, that you are not master of your life because there are only two masters. You're either under the mastery of God or you're under the mastery of Satan. There is no other master. You and I do not run our lives. Let's get that straight. We're either under the mastery of God and the Lordship of Christ, or we're under the mastery of Satan. So let's not get this impression that I'm, I'm good enough. I, I can handle myself. You're going to run your ship on the rocks. But let God today, through Jesus Christ, take your ship off the rocks. So in John's Gospel, he doesn't instruct anything. It says here, Jesus found a young ass. Jesus found the ass. In the others we are saying, it was a matter of going and looking. But in John's gospel, the one who is initiating things, the one who is acting is the Lord Jesus himself. And he is acting from himself. He's acting of himself and he's acting for himself. Because he's going to get something out of getting you as a little coat. He's going to get something in getting you as a coat and in getting you as a coat. He wants something for his father. You remember the woman in chapter 4 of John's Gospel? The woman at the well. Jesus tells her, the Father is seeking worshippers. And Jesus is the one who is seeking worshippers for his Father. He wants you as a young colt to be a worshipper. That's what he wants. He wants you for his Father. He wants you for his Father's house. He wants to bring you into the joy of the Father's house above. He wants to bring you there where His love will rest upon you eternally. But He wants to have that rest, that love rest upon you now. It has to rest upon you now if it's going to rest upon you eternally. You have to make a decision for God, a decision for Christ today in order to be available for the blessings of the Father's house eternally. You have to come under His love now. He wants you for His love. He wants you for His Father's house. So He goes out to find you. And Jesus is passing through the pews today. And He wants to find a colt here and a colt there. He wants to find in each of us Persons who are responsive to His love. He wants to find us today. Are you available? Am I available? Will we be available for Him? He wants for His Father. Can you imagine a young man who knows his father has a business and for a moment he has taken an interest in his father's business. And every day he gets up, every morning and dresses and heads out to his father's business because he wants to see his father's business thriving, getting better and better and better. He wants to see, he wants to promote his father and he wants to make sure that he is full-heartedly in the business with his father so that his father's business is booming. That's the idea of the Lord Jesus. He wants to see his father's business booming. So he goes out and he looks for coats. And he has pulled each and every one of us in who know him personally. But if you don't know him personally, he wants you this afternoon as that coat. What is he going to do with it? Beautify the coat? Keep it tied up in a corner and put some clothes on it and make it look like that donkey that they used to, in the piñatas, to beat upon it. Is that what he wants? No. He wants to beautify that colt 
so that he might sit on it. Have you ever sat on an untamed colt? You know what it does? It kicks up. It kicks up for life. You can't sit on an untamed colt. It has to be first tamed. But you know what Jesus does? He simultaneously tames you while he's sitting on you. He's going to sit on you and he's going to subject you to himself. You're going to be a colt that will not kick up. You'll be a colt that is responsive to him. He's going to sit on you. He's going to ride you. And you know what? You're going to love it. Because you're going to be, you're going to love to be the one who is able to carry the Lord of glory. To know that you are available for Him. He loves you. That's why He wants you as a colt. Their little one back there this afternoon. He wants you because He loves you. He wants to sit on you. Are you going to give Him room? You can give Him room to sit on you by giving your life to Him. For you older ones who do not know Him, He wants you to sit on you also. And those of us who know Him, He also wants us so that He might sit on us. You know, there are some of us with a lot of stubborn wills. Is that not true? I know myself. We're full of it. We're full of rebellion in a lot of ways. But you know what he's going to do? When he sits on us, he's going to bring us down under subjection to himself and obedience to his will. That's why he wants us today. Jesus wants you for a sunbeam to shine for him each day. Jesus wants you as a colt so he can sit upon us and regulate us. That's what he wants to do. Am I ready to let him do that? He's going to get the greatest joy out of finding subjection to himself in me and you. He's going to get the greatest joy. And you know, if he gets joy, guess what we're going to get? We're going to be blessed. That colt that submitted itself to the Lord Jesus and didn't kick up on its way to Jerusalem, that colt that stood still and on which he rode, <coughs> rejoiced. Do you remember there was a colt, well not a colt, an ass, in the Old Testament. It belonged to a man by the name of Balaam, an old prophet. Balaam, an old prophet in the Old Testament. And Balaam was a man determined that he was going to go make some money for himself on the basis of cursing Israel. Even though God had told him, you can't curse them. They're blessed. He's determined, I'm going to make some money by cursing them. And he was on his way on this donkey uh, sent by Balak. He's going on his way to curse Israel. And God came along the way and put up his hand to stop the donkey. The donkey knew the hand of God and stopped. But Balaam, who was ignorant about the hand of God, kept forcing the donkey to go. Kept forcing it and forcing it. And eventually, you know what happened to the donkey? The donkey spoke. The donkey spoke. And Balaam had to stop. The donkey says, have I ever done anything wrong? Why are you kicking me? Have I ever done anything wrong? Well, that was a, a donkey that wasn't subject. That was a donkey, rather, that was subject to its, to its master. And its master was the God of glory. I trust that you will be a donkey today and a little colt today. And I would be as well one that is subject to the master. If you don't know him, you can know him personally now as your Savior. Simply by faith, receive the Lord Jesus Christ into your heart. Let him come in. Let him rule. Let him ride you. He will ride you in such a way for his pleasure and glory and for your blessing. May it be so for his name's sake.